Welcome ladies and gents, Chris Andre here. You can find me at BetBoxing on Twitter for boxing related tweets so you can subscribe to the channel, click that notifications button and get a new notification whenever a new video is uploaded. I've been away for a, a bit of time, a bit longer than a week. Um, unfortunately, I've had some family responsibilities that I've had to take care of, so there's been a bit of a delay. I apologize about that, but here we are, we're back. I thank you for all your messages of people asking me when the new videos are coming out and stuff like that. I appreciate the love and the support, guys. So let's talk about Joe Joyce and Carlos Takam tonight. Really, really fun fight. I didn't have the opportunity to, to do a, a preview video. But what I did do is go onto Twitter before the fight. And I put out a, a couple of tweets, just short tweets, discussing how I felt the fight would go. And what I said is, uh, Joyce is in for a much tougher fight than people realise tonight, I believe. Takam can actually move a bit on the back foot. And when he comes on the inside, he's rugged and varies uh, to the, uh, body and head attacks well Joe might struggle to find a home for the right hand I think Joyce is likely to come on strong late sorry come on strong late on and have enough to win but this is a proper test if Takam is still at his best I wouldn't rule him out but I do fancy Joyce and I asked everybody else's thoughts and when a couple of you had said I fancy Joyce late on I did say look I do feel that is the most likely outcome but I felt that Takam would build up a lead and Joyce would wear him down and so when the pattern of the fight started to play out it was going exactly as I expected Takam was on the back foot he was trying to lure Joe Joyce in and then launch himself in with big leading power shots of his own and vary from the head to the body very very well and there was a clear discrepancy in hand speed so as Joe's trying to get his own shots off he's struggling to land them and we saw this with Dubois as well when it came to the power shots the one shot that is very consistent for Joe is his lead left hand and he puts in incredible amounts of uh, foot pressure generally speaking whereby he's making you work and you feel like you have to throw big shots to keep him off and these guys are throwing these massive shots to keep him off they're struggling to put a dent in him because they're so, he's such a beast of him. He's a, he's a juggernaut. That's, he's an immovable force. That is a perfect nickname for the dude. And because of that, he's making you work hard. And so as the fight wears on, he then starts to shorten up his shot. Initially, his shots have to be quite short apart from the jab because he's too slow with his hands to be able to catch you when you're fresh. But as you're, you can see Takam with a lot of these jerky movements, a lot of movement, and it's constant. And he's throwing these big, powerful shots, which are uh, energy exerting. Joyce is short with his shots. Like I said, almost looks robotic. He tends to take the center of the ring. So he's forcing you to work. As you then tire, those shortened shots, he can start to put a little bit more on them. And he started to look for hooks to the body that were, you know, the one place where he can wind up without worrying about you slipping and missing um, is is shots to the body and he'll target that solar plexus he'll try to get it into a central area of the body or to the ribs um, so he can come through the middle off of an angle or around the side with the shot uh, and he's very very good at it and he wears you down and then once he does wear you down he starts to throw these straight shots that are consistent and he's so naturally heavy-handed he doesn't have to load up on them uh, and you saw that you know for me the first round that Joe Joyce won and it was a close round so even if you were to tell me actually I think Takam won that one too I wouldn't necessarily say I'm against your viewpoint but that was the fifth round now the commentators felt he definitely won the fifth but although Takam's work rate had dropped massively so did the tempo of Joe Joyce and I asked why is he feeling those body shots because personally I'd want to see more foot pressure more feints from Joe Joyce make Takam work even if you're not yet willing to let your hands go fully uh, and he came out in the in the next round, the, uh, the sixth round, straight away, letting his hands go. And he really went for Takam. He smelled blood. And that's what Joe Joyce is so good at, you know. He'll he'll smell that blood. He'll know that the, the, the opponent's weakened. And then all of a sudden, Joe goes to work. And uh, I thought the stoppage was a little bit premature. I'm not going to lie. I felt that for a guy of the level and experience and ruggedness of Carlos Takam, you have to give him a little bit longer. Because although he was taking a lot of unanswered shots, I still felt like he was lucid. And you could see the moment the referee waved it off, Takam pushed him away. A split second, there was no delay. He was there. He knew what was going on. And he would have felt like, look, I was winning the fight 4-1, 5-0. This is harsh. This is the first sort of crisis I've had. How can you just stop me? That's his perspective. To be honest with you, I think the stoppage was coming anyway. I think Joe Joyce is an absolute animal and this is what he does. But um, yeah, from his perspective... I think it was a bit harsh. The fight went exactly as I expected, perhaps though two, three rounds earlier than I thought. You know, I thought it would get to about round nine or whatever. But this idea of Takam with a superior hand speed, luring Joe in off the back foot, jumping in, going to work uh, and outworking Joe Joyce is really what I expected to see with Joe Joyce wearing him down late on. In terms of Joe Joyce, how do you overcome this obstacle? Well, the thing is, a lot of guys are so keen to keep him off and he's so physically strong 
that if he's coming towards you, one way of trying to control the tempo is to tie him up. But because he's naturally so physically strong, it's very hard to know what it would feel like to wrestle Joe Joyce consistently. That could wear you down too, right? So do you land big shots to try and keep him off? Well, I personally think the sort of guy that would beat Joe Joyce is a guy who's going to be able to land pitter-patter stuff to keep him at bay, essentially, and um, win rounds, nick rounds early on. But then when Joe really wants to put his foot on the gas, you've still got enough in your gas tank to then have to dig deep if you have to. In other words, too many fighters are trying to really hurt him early on to get him off. But that's not the way to do it. You're just going to have to accept that you're going to be moving around for the first however many rounds. You're going to have to accept it. You know, you Don't try and think, right, I'm walking him onto a big shot. I'm taking this guy out. Don't think along those lines. Think of it like a scoring fight for the first six, seven, eight rounds. Then when he starts to put his foot on the gas... That's when you have to really bite down on the gum shield. The problem is, in the meantime, you don't want to accrue too much damage. We know that he's very consistent with that jab. We saw how damaging it can be against Daniel Dubois. Now, in terms of stylistically, therefore, the sort of fighters that I believe cause him problems, I believe Tyson Fury would probably beat him based on the fact that Fury is more than happy to get on the back foot, flick that jab, tie up if he has to tie up, and he seems to have the stamina to go with that and really keep Joe Joyce at bay. There would be some scary moments there, I believe, for Fury late on in the fight, but I believe he'd probably build up a big enough lead to be able to see it out, right? Now, Tyson Fury isn't necessarily a big stretch to say I think he beats Joe Joyce. Um, Anthony Joshua, if he shows the uh, back foot game that he showed against Ruiz, maybe he'd get the job done against Joe Joyce. I'd also believe he'd build up a lead against Joyce. But the difference is, AJ tends to be the, the physically stronger man, and he seems to enjoy that, the big power puncher that can really hurt a guy. He has had stamina issues. If he can't hurt Joe Joyce, what happens down the stretch? Does AJ tire? So that's a brilliant fight that I'd love to see. Deontay Wilder, another one. You know, Deontay Wilder, if, if Joe Joyce gets him out of the first, if he gets himself out of the first three or four rounds, you'd think Wilder's going to be in serious trouble if he's being forced to work from early on. It could end up looking like that first Fury fight where he's really being walked down. But unlike Fury, Joe Joyce doesn't evade punches as well. And I don't care how durable you are. Are you going to tell many of those right hands are you going to take from Deontay Wilder? So that's not a great fight. If you're talking about out of left field, right? Something that's going to be controversial. Something that's going to make a lot of you go, what are you on about, Chris? Because I believe in styles making fights. It's not just about levels. If you're talking about styles making fights, one guy that could cause Joe Joyce a whole host of problems is Huey Fury. And again, Huey is very durable. You don't really see him hurt. He's been in there with guys that have pretty heavy-handed, not monster punchers, but pretty heavy-handed. Pavetkin is a good puncher, short power, a lot of that. Parker has fairly heavy hands. We've spoken about his punching technique and how he could improve that in the past. But when he lets his hands go, and you know he's, he can be an explosive puncher. Um, Pulev is not a monster puncher, but respectable. We've never really seen Huey get banged up or hurt. He's durable. But he's also the sort of guy that can move for 12 rounds, flick out a jab, as we saw in that first Joseph Parker fight between the two, the only Joseph Parker fight between the two. Huey Fury could potentially frustrate him. He could cause him a bit, some few problems early on. If he's able to win the jabbing contest, that's no given. But because he's longer and taller, um, it would be interesting. He's more fluid as well, Huey Fury. But it would be interesting with the sustained pressure of Joe Joyce get to Huey or would Huey build up a big lead and then Joe Joyce has to chase the fight down the stretch it just becomes interesting I'm not saying Huey definitely wins that fight but for a guy who's not considered elite that's a fight I would be interested in seeing domestic fight as well you know you could really sell that that'd be interesting you know have Tyson Fury a ringside potential future opponent really interesting stuff in my humble opinion let me know what you think about this fight guys I'm going to do another video um, after this one talking about more general boxing topics things that have happened that while I've been away but I'm not going to upload that till tomorrow so I don't saturate the channel please check that out as well look forward to hearing from all of you guys chat to you soon take care god bless hit that like button subscribe button notifications button take care